in the Wayland world, you have a couple of options for building a compositor. You could build something entirely from scratch. This is going to take a lot of time to get something even remotely functional and really isn't worth it unless you're building a reference implementation like Western or you're a really big project like KDE and GNOME. A much simpler option is taking an existing compositor, forking it, and then building off of that. Whether it's off of something like Kwin, Mutter, Sway, Hyperland, or anything else out there. But what a lot of projects do is make use of a compositor library, the most common being WL Roots, a library written in C. But there are other options like LibWestern, which takes the Western project and turns into a reusable library. And thanks to PopOS's Cosmic, the Rust library Smithy has been getting quite a bit of attention. However, a lot more recently, there is a whole new project that people are talking about, that being a C++ library called Louvre. When I say it's new, that's not just referring to the coverage. This whole project is also really new. It's been around since about the start of this year and currently has 146 commits. And if it delivers on what it is promising, I think this is going to be a really interesting contender. So the way it describes itself is as a high performance C++ library designed for building Wayland compositors with a strong emphasis on ease of development. Creating a Wayland compositor can be a daunting undertaking, often spanning months or even years of dedication. This challenging task involves mastering Linux input and graphics APIs, managing graphics buffers, and meticulously implementing numerous Wayland protocols and their respective interfaces. Fortunately, Louvre simplifies this intricate process by handling all the complex low-level tasks on your behalf. It even provides a default way for managing protocols, enabling you to have a basic but functional compositor from day one and progressively explore and customize its functionality to precisely match your requirements. Now, whilst WL Roots greatly simplifies the process of writing a compositor entirely from scratch, as I've shown with posts like this one, writing a Wayland compositor is much harder than it should be, and thoughts on writing a Wayland window manager with WL roots, it's not a coincidence that there are not that many Wayland options available. Yes, there are quite a few nowadays, but in comparison to how many X11 options there are, and how many Wayland options there are, there's clearly a lot fewer. A lot of that simply boils down to the fact that there is just a lot more work to do on Wayland. When you're writing an X11 window manager, you are writing a window manager. When you're writing a Wayland compositor, you are writing a compositor, a display server, a window manager. You need to understand input APIs and graphics APIs. It's a lot more complex of a task to actually get it done. Whilst things on WL Roots have certainly gotten a lot simpler, thanks to more recent additions like the Scene Graph API, the knowledge gap between X11 and Wayland is still absolutely massive. So I can appreciate a developer who is going out of their way to try to mitigate these issues. However, before you throw out WL Roots and say it's bad, keep in mind this project is still very, 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 very early on. And there is a lot of things that, at least in my opinion, stop it from being at all practical in its current state. But these are development issues, not fundamental design problems. For example, the upcoming features, touch events, pointer gestures, X Wayland. Currently, this does not support X Wayland. The way that we run X11 applications under a Wayland environment. As nice as it would be to have a full-on native Wayland experience, as it currently stands, that's not entirely practical. Whether it's web browsers, which are just barely getting to the state where native Wayland is actually not only viable, but actually good. Whether it's things like Wine, primarily with gaming, where you need to use X Wayland if you want to play any of these games. And there's also important legacy software, whether it's GIMP or anything else. Most people out there are going to be running at least a couple of applications in X Wayland. It's also just a little bit lacking in the Wayland protocols department. So we have the Wayland core protocols because 
Of course we do. It's a whaling compositor. We have XDG Shell. This is basically your core application metadata protocol. We have XDG Decoration. This is the one that GNOME refuses to implement that allows for server-side decorations. Because that's a whole video topic unto itself. We have Presentation Time. This deals with some video playback issues allowing for smooth video playback. And we also have Linux DMA Buff. This is a more efficient way to transfer GPU buffers. However, there is no mention of session lock. This is incredibly important and allows for interchangeable lock screens. If you're something like GNOME, KDE, you are going to ship a lock screen that is directly in the compositor. But a standalone window manager is probably not going to do that. Some of them might, and that's great. But a lot of them are going to want to have the ability for the user to bring in their own lock screen. This is what does that in a secure way. Before this protocol, they were really terrible and you could just circumvent them and it was just a buggy mess. The next one is the tearing control. Tearing control is another one that a lot of GNOME devs really don't like that it exists, but it allows for screen tearing. Why would you want screen tearing? Well, for certain people, it leads to a far better gaming experience, allowing for much more responsive input. Now, if you don't like screen tearing, don't enable screen tearing. But having it as an option is objectively a good thing. And lastly, fractional scale. It does what it says on the tin. It allows for sharing of metadata to make fractional scaling actually possible. This is my hope. My hope is the author implements all of these protocols along with all of the other protocols supported by WL Roots. Not because WL Roots is a bad project. WL Roots is just complicated to work with. And if this has a functionally equivalent protocol set, that is going to make this a really compelling project for someone who feels that WL Roots is just a bit too complex to work with, but they still want to build a compositor. This if done well, is going to massively improve the Wayland ecosystem. And if this does become an important part of the Wayland ecosystem, a lot of projects are built on it, and it becomes a voting member of the Wayland Protocols project, I want to see another voice that is willing to work on these cross-desktop solutions, that is willing to work with what WL Roots want, willing to work with what Kwin wants, and even willing to work with what GNOME wants, along with all of these other smaller entities that are starting to join the Wayland ecosystem. Because I have seen way too many situations at this point, whether it's with server-side decorations, whether it's with tearing, whether it's with the fact that GNOME is still stalling on getting VR headsets working on their Wayland compositor, I have seen way too many situations where a small group of selfish GNOME developers are holding back the entire Wayland ecosystem because they don't want to work with what the rest of the ecosystem wants. Now, whether it's the missing protocols or the missing features, neither of these are fundamental design issues and are just a matter of the project being fairly new. Whilst tearing is nice, whilst session lock is nice, whilst fractional scaling is nice, they're not fundamentally needed to have a working compositor library. Same with X Wayland, it doesn't need to be there, it just probably should be. And over time, I hope they are going to be addressed. Now, towards the bottom of the page, the author also includes some benchmarks. Now, these benchmarks, how do I describe them? Very misleading, I think is the best term. Louvre is the blue line, Western is the pink line, and Sway is the yellow line. And in every single test, Louvre performs better. This being an FPS test as you increase the number of surfaces, this being a CPU consumption test, on this first test, Louvre uses a lot more CPU, but for some reason, the author doesn't normalize the FPS, so this is running at 60 FPS, and this is running at 30 FPS now, and lower is better. I don't know why you'd even include that test in the first place. And this is GPU consumption. Once again, Louvre performs better, with the exception of this one, where Western does use slightly less watts. And this looks really good, but so do GPU manufacturer benchmarks. What is actually being tested here? Obviously, you can see Sway, Western, and Louvre. But what is the system it's running on? 
what distro, what driver versions, what hardware in the first place is an NVIDIA system, an AMD system, an Intel system, a AMD CPU with an NVIDIA GPU, an AMD GPU with an Intel CPU. None of that is mentioned. It does say this has been tested on Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD. But it doesn't say specifically what these benchmarks actually come from. Does Sway or Western maybe perform worse on a certain GPU manufacturer? Maybe. I don't know. It is entirely unclear based on the results we are seeing here. My other problem is over the software being tested. Louvre is a compositor library. Sway and Western are both compositors. You can't just like directly compare them like that. So to compare them, a project called Louvre Western Clone was made, which is a Western clone made in Louvre. Okay, that would work as a comparison with Western. Where's the Louvre Sway clone? Because Sway has a lot more features than Western, it implements a lot more protocols. It makes sense that it would run worse, and especially in like the GPU consumption here, that makes sense because it's doing more things. To have a fair comparison, it would need to have the same feature set as Sway, Otherwise, it shouldn't even be on the graph here. Now, if you want to go and verify the benchmark yourself, all of the software is available, you can go and run them on your own system. But that's not my point. If you're going to include benchmarks in your README, they should be clear over what you're actually benchmarking, otherwise they're just clutter here for the sake of clutter, and doesn't really provide any value to a developer who might want to use this project. I don't think for a second the author here is trying to be malicious. They included the benchmarks as a quick reference to see, okay, this is what the performance is actually like. And that's great, and I really appreciate it. And with a little bit of extra work, they actually can be really, really useful. I don't want anything I said to be taken as a condemnation of the project. All of this stuff is very, very easy to fix. And I think in a couple of years, if the developer keeps up this project, this can be a really interesting competitor in the Wayland space. But for now, I'm going to keep my eye on it and just see what the developer does. And hopefully one day, a lot more people will have the option to build a Wayland compositor that otherwise found it just way too complicated to do. Because the date where Wayland is going to be the only option available is coming up fairly soon. So... I want things to be ready by then, but until then, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Have you ever worked with W Roots? Are you excited for a project like this? And what do you run on your system right now? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video, and if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I had to look up how this name was pronounced.